This morning, longtime Kramer fave international paper, the largest paper company in North America, reported what the market's treating like a mixed quarter. Bountiful 11 cent earnings beat off of an 84 cent basis on slightly weaker than expected revenues that declined 1.7 percent year over year. The stock dropped about a dollar today. But you know what? I think it's a pretty solid quarter. And if international paper hadn't run up into the quarter, then today's action might have been different. Plus, you could have made a, long, a lot of long term money in this one with the stock giving us a 160 percent return with dividends since I got behind in September of 2009. So let's check in with John Faraci, the chairman and CEO of International Paper, to hear more about the quarter and where his company is headed. Mr. Faraci, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Hi, Jim. Good to see you. Have a seat. Beyond. All right, John, I got to tell you, I, I felt that there was just a very good quarter, but there's a lot of chatter going into the quarter by my old friend Richie Perry at Goldman Sachs, sure. who then went on to be a hedge fund manager, that there's some of the parts of your company could be dramatic. He's talking about $75 if you took advantage of what I, I regard as a tax loophole and, and create an MLP. You seem to be in the conference call willing to be open to anything, but is this pie in the sky? Well, I don't know if it's pie in the sky, and it's not just international paper. I think, uh, you know, uh, Perry Capital came out and said this is something that could apply to all the container right. producers. Uh, so it's not unique to international paper. Uh, it's complicated. It's uh, probably more than theoretical, but it's a long way from something that international paper could contemplate. You know, for one, you need an IRS private letter ruling. Right. They're not giving those now. They're not giving? Uh, oh, really? I mean, like, even if you applied for it. They, there's a moratorium on the IRS giving them, we understand. Okay. Uh, and they have given one in, to a container board company before. So, uh, and we need to understand what the ramifications are across all of international paper, right. not just the container board business. So, we talked about that. You know, we're very right. open to talking with all of our share owners uh, about any ideas they have. And I think, as you know, We've been really ready, willing, and able to do whatever it takes to improve international. Right. Policy. I mean, you said at one point in the call, you look at IP's track record over the last seven years, yeah. most recently the spend, merge, the expedite, Unisource, the transaction, the first one to take two private companies public. I mean, you're clearly ready. Sure. If this could be, if you evaluate this, it sounds like, and it really could produce big gains, it would be on IP's radar. Sure. I mean, if it passes all the pressure tests and we think it's the right thing for share owners and the right thing for international paper, which obviously one of the same. Um, we look at it it's very now, seriously. There are a couple of secular trends in here that I thought were really important that we got to talk about. One is, is that throughout this quarter, it looks like that consumer, it, the environmental stretch, the environmental leap that paper is making over plastic and foam yeah. is really starting to play out in real earnings now. It certainly is in our food service business uh, okay. where we've got record units, uh, you know, record revenues. And we're making one of the, uh, the first investment we've made in that business in organic growth and probably the second in Invest, we've been in organic growth in North America in the last five years because, you know, we've had plenty of capacity, but now we're out of, out of capacity. So it's but great. Th this is it, right? I mean, this is people requesting that whoever they're sure. buying food from not use foam. We've got a great sustainability story. IP does, our industry does, right. and we haven't told it. And uh, in some segments, like food service, uh, uh, particularly hot coffee, uh, consumers are catching on, and as a result, our customers are catching on. Wow, it's really happening. Now, the other side, I mean, obviously, uh, this had been a great story just in terms of rising price of container board. At a certain point, we get some softness in the economy. We just don't, don't get the price increases that you, that you expect. Well, you know, pricing in these businesses, as you know, is all about supply and demand. Right. And demand has been, you know, pretty, you know, pretty anemic. It hasn't been going backwards, I but know. it's been, you know, the consumer, which is 70 percent of our economy, has, it's been very choppy. You know, one, one month, Consumer spending's up, another month it's flat, another month it's slightly down. So until we see some steady, sustainable increases in consumer spending, we're going to see a box market that's improving, but improving very slowly. Uh, in Europe, uh, our box business is up 4% volume-wise year over year. I mean, that's, uh, and the industry's up like 1% in the quarter year. Well, you still have the best proprietary technology. And that's all upside for us. If we can right. get the kind of performance we're getting in today's environment with demand the way it is, think what will happen is the U.S. economy improves, which it will. Absolutely. Now, uh, while uh, the market was open, the president's talking very tough about Russia. Right. You've got a good business in Russia. At what point does that turn out to be something that is that we got to worry about for shareholders? Well, at this point, it's had no impact on our operations. I mean, obviously, we'd like to see a diplomatic solution to, uh, to this as well. It's good for the world. It's good for the U.S. It's good for Russia. It's good for all businesses. Uh, so we're watching the situation carefully. Uh, but we have two businesses in Russia. One makes products and sells them in Russia. Right. The Russian economy is slowing, right. for sure. Right. The other bigger business makes products in Russia but ships them to China. And that business is... Uh, is quite robust and is where we put a lot of our capital investment over the last year and a half.
but what, at the same time, China even isn't consistent anymore, yeah. it seems for you. Well, I mean, you've made this great move in Asia. Yeah. The emerging markets are slowing, but I, I, the analogy I use, it's like a car when it's going 70 miles an hour slows to 50, it feels like right. it's slowing down. Uh, the developed economies like Western Europe and the U.S. are growing from 2 percent to 3 percent, so we're, instead of going 20 miles an hour, we're headed toward 30 miles an hour, okay. and it feels like we're going faster. Right. But still, the relative growth rates are, are, are different. Now, how about energy and input costs? Yeah, somewhat discouraging input costs, unfavorable input yeah. costs. Could, this, could your company ever do what Nucor did, which is just say, you know what, we're going like, to go own natural gas wells? IP's been down that road before. You know, we were in the energy <laughs> business. Funny. We had natural gas uh, properties. We, were, uh, uh, we leased wells. We drilled some of our own. That's really not our core competency. Right. Uh, and we're competing like everybody else is, whatever energy markets are. Gas prices have come off recently. Right. That's why uh, I thought that maybe next quarter the yeah. input type would look very different from. This I think it, I think it will, Jim. Uh, what's going to hit us for the full year is wood fiber. Right. Um, you know that's uh, the pressure on uh, the wood resources here in the U.S. because of uh, biomass fuel right. going to places like Europe uh, is just creating a supply demand imbalance. But we can compete, um, you know, for fiber. Well, it was still a good quarter, and I think that there's... It was a good quarter. It's yeah, best, just a really good quarter. Best second quarter in 10 years. Right, and I think people overlooked that because the stock did have a magnificent run last week, and just another good job from you, John. Thank you Well, the you important so point is we're not done. No, yeah, you're that's... clearly not done, and a lot of things secularly are going very right. That's thank you to John Faraci, the chairman and CEO of International Paper. There's just so many ways to win with some great American companies like IP. After the break, I'll try to make even more money.